What's going on everyone? It's Justin here and today I've got a video of what is in my travel bag. So these are items that I take as kind of like my essentials when I'm traveling, whether it comes to tech and just some other items. And being a tech YouTuber, you might notice that there is a little bit more tech than you might need. But here are just the items that I bring when I'm traveling around because in the past year, I've been on around 100 flights flying to like Europe, Asia, US and stuff like that. So I've tried to optimize my pack as well as possible and try to keep things nice and light, even though most most of the time it doesn't seem to end up that way. But if you guys have any suggestions for what I should bring when I travel or some of the hacks that you might have, I'd love to hear them down in the comment section below and make sure you remember to drop a like on this video. So a lot of times I might switch between different backpacks, whether it's like a larger nylon one or one for more of like a compact pack like this one. And in some cases also a camera bag as well if we're trying to bring like a ton of camera gear instead of checking it on the plane. So just for starters, the main compartment here has like the larger products. And the main piece that I use for like a computer that I take on the go is the MacBook Pro 13 inch with touch bar. This MacBook has a quad core i7 processor as well as 16 gigs of RAM. And when it comes to doing like general video editing, like 1080p or even a little bit of 4K, it's able to handle just fine. But especially if you start to do like longer projects, it might struggle a little bit. And that's when I choose to bring the 15 inch, which has more capability on the graphics side. So as someone who captures a lot of content while I'm traveling, whether it is photo and video on a lot of memory cards that need to be backed up so I can wipe them, a great tool is to have a nice SSD that is also nice and portable. And this one right here is from Rav Power, and it has either a 512 or one terabyte storage capacity. Because it is a solid state drive, it is super fast at up to 540 megabytes per second, but I think the best part about it is just how small it is, and it also has a nice metal enclosure to keep it protected with all your data in it. This is one where a lot of times I might have like two or three of them laying around and just grab and go and just either have like video project files or just general backups on these small little cards. I do have a lot of different types of SSDs and some of which are very nice to use, but the biggest commonality between them is that they are much larger than this. So considering this can carry up to one terabyte just in your pocket and how small it is, is awesome. And if you guys wanna go ahead and check it out, I've got a discount code for you to get it for $149 or also the 512 gig model for just $69.99. The next most important piece of tech in my opinion, aside from the smartphone, is something to listen to music to whether you're on a flight or just walking around the airport and got a nice little delay like I'm pretty used to. And these are the Apple AirPods Pro which finally have active noise cancellation and improved sound quality. So these are here now have silicone ear tips which give you a nice seal and you can control the noise isolation from your smartphone whether it is noise cancelling, off or transparent mode which allows you to listen to like the airport announcements and stuff around you. The battery life is up to 5 hours which is great for longer flights. You can get easily through like a relatively long flight or halfway through another. And with just 5 minutes of charge in the case you can get an hour of listening and within the case itself you have 24 hours of charge. But the active noise cancellation is the biggest reason why I can recommend this for travel because previously even though the Apple AirPods were ones that I took when I traveled on the flight. For example, if you're listening to like a movie or where there's dialogue, you really do have troubles listening to what they're saying because there's no seal whatsoever. So another pair of headphones that I also like to take around with me on certain trips is a little bit larger, but it definitely is worth it when needed, is the Bose QC35 2s. And these are also active noise canceling, but I believe it does a much better job than the Apple AirPods. And it's not anything against the Apple AirPods. They're great as well, but they're very tiny and not as kind of intrusive as these are, but these literally block out every bit of sound that you might want it to. And that is especially handy on flights. So if I've got like a four or five hour flight, I won't even bother. But if I've got like an overseas flight, I will definitely take these with me because I can just put them on, isolate all the sound and just go to sleep and wake up when I land. Um, and these right here are just very light. They're comfortable. The ear cups don't get too hot. So you can wear them for many, many hours. And the sound quality is pretty decent for a pair of noise canceling headphones. But I just like the fact that they look good. They're very flexible. And this one right here is actually from my friends over at Colorwear. So you can customize the color on the trim as well as the sides and the ear cups to like a glossy or matte finish. So if you wanna go for like a bright red, bright yellow, or something that matches your team or a color that you love, you can do that. But if you also just wanna have something that's nice and subtle and uniform, a little bit more low key, then this is one right here where I've just kind of customized the gold trim on the edge. They fold completely flat, have up to 20 hours of battery, which lasts multiple trips. And you can also put them in the carry case that are included, which makes it nice and easy to carry around. So the next piece of tech that is also an essential piece of travel, in my opinion, is the iPad Pro or any iPad that they make right now, because many of which are cheaper and get the job done exactly the same way as this one. 
But the one that I have right here is the iPad Pro and it travels on any trip, whether it is a short flight or a long flight, because it is good for many different things. It is especially good for multimedia and it doesn't take up too much space on the tray table, but you can also do like emails, photo editing and stuff like that. And you can also use the Apple Pencil to make the most of it. But just as a general multimedia machine, I love to use this. So I find myself using this at the airport, on the plane, and when I land and try to do some actual work, I'll use my MacBook for that. The battery life is quite impressive and I find it lasting like a couple trips and I also think the display looks really good and overall it's just an all-in-one productivity tool but I just don't think it is exactly ready to replace the computer just yet. Another piece of tech that you also never want to forget is a charger and I find myself losing these all the time but this right here is just like a four power brick from Anchor and it has four ports on the back that give you nice fast charge and just have like different cables such as USB type C, micro USB for camera equipment as well as the lightning cable and also having the appropriate adapters is very important because in the past I've like forgot to buy it until I landed and I actually had a lot of trouble finding chargers elsewhere. The next piece of tech though is the Apple iPhone 11 Pro and this is currently my daily driver smartphone and it doesn't really relate to travel but it is the phone that is kind of the main hub for everything it's got my boarding passes on it as well as all the airline apps right here um, and this one right now lasts me an entire day in terms of battery life whereas the previous generation iPhone I found was like dying halfway through the day and I'd have to use like a battery pack and stuff so with the iPhone 11 Pro I don't actually bring a portable charger anymore because my new luggage the away bag actually has one built in which is very very handy if you're someone who loves to document your travels for your friends and family, for example, like myself, or look back at it as a memory or show to you guys, then a great creative editing tool that makes it fast and easy to edit videos and add a travel touch to it is Motion VFX's M Travel and M Travel 2 plugin pack. These two packs together give you over 100 travel themed elements that are all drag and drop, fully customizable to enhance your travel film and make it your own. These include compositions such as pointing parts of maps, plane animations, clouds, weather, as well as cruises and maps. And there is also lower thirds to allow you to describe the location and products, as well as different titles as well. These titles are all great for introducing a location, showing an itinerary or travel route and activities in a very visually appealing manner. There's also some pretty cool transitions and these all kind of come together to make it easy to tell a story of your trip to everyone who is watching. So anyone could just go ahead and drop these over a clip and customize them exactly the way you would like. If you guys want to go ahead and check out M Travel as well as M Travel 2 from Motion VFX as well as all their other great tools for Final Cut that make it very easy to story tell, I'm going to drop a link to them down below and a huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video. So now that we've covered a lot of the tech items that I currently bring, now on to like some of the little things and bits and pieces that might live in the front compartment of the bag. Um, so right here we've got the passport of course, you never want to forget that. Um, and the next thing we have is a set of shoe cleaners. So a lot of times you might get off a plane and have to go to a meeting and you have like some dirty shoes. And even though I don't clean my shoes that often, having like a set of Jason Mark wipes that you can whip out right away and clean up the shoes, it does a very good job. And I think it's just like something that is nice and small to have in the front compartment. Another very essential piece is an eye mask. And a lot of times you're sitting next to someone on the plane and even though it's like a midnight flight or a red eye, they decide to turn on that reading light and it's just super annoying. So having like an eye mask like this, just put this on with a pair of noise canceling headphones, you zone out, get your rest. And even though it's like something that's like 50 cent or even like an airline might just give you for free, it is something that you just wanna take on every single trip in your travel bag. Another thing that I've also been bringing around recently in my backpack, because I do have a lot of delayed flights or sometimes where you have to like stay overnight somewhere because of a missed flight, is a toiletry case. And the toughest part is being able to narrow down your pack to things that you need in order to take them on the flight without getting them confiscated by TSA. So this right here is a leather danger field pouch and it is very nice. You've got two zippers on the top and the quality of the material and everything is what I'm a huge fan of. So one of the things that I might have in here is like an electric toothbrush from Bruch. A huge thanks to my friend Bradley for this. And if you're wondering why I have a white case for the black one, it's because I lost the white toothbrush and I lost the black case. So there you go, you've got a very nice portable setup and this is one of the most portable electric toothbrushes that I've seen. Um, so this fits right into the pouch right here. And some of the other things are just like general like stuff that you steal from hotels, um, shampoo and stuff you could shower at the airport, which I think is like the ultimate luxury. But here's like the Aesop travel pack and just all these things could pop right into here and you never know when you might need them. In the other compartment, one of the things that I've got to have is hair wax. So there's a black layerite, which is one that I recommend to people who have like thick Asian hair like myself. And this is like just like a little travel version that you can take anywhere you go. And yeah, just go ahead and pop this in here. And the last thing that is in my toiletry case is the shaver. So this right here is the Babilis. 
Um, and a lot of times at airports, they don't really know what this is and you end up getting stopped. But there you have it. This is kind of what I take on the travel uh, toiletry case. And sometimes I might just send it on the plane, but on trips where there might be like multiple flights and a high chance of missing one of them, then I'll just go ahead and pack it down into like a travel size for everything and just throw this in my bag. I also think it's very important to have like a set of pajamas or a change of clothes in your bag because this year I've had two trips where my baggage didn't make it where I was going and they had no idea when it was gonna arrive. So being able to get off the plane after like 20 hours and take a shower at the hotel and have a nice clean set of clothes or just change into it before you're getting on a long flight is also very nice. So just go ahead and roll up a t-shirt and throw it in your bag and it also keeps some of your tech products protected as well. But now that I've talked about like kind of the tech that I bring and the general things that I take on a given trip, I wanna talk a little bit about some travel hacks that I've kind of found over the years of traveling. Previously, I didn't have any memberships with any programs, uh, loyalty programs or proper credit cards. And until my parents told me like a million times that I wasn't making the most of travel that I was already doing and a lot of times covered by company, um, these are some of the hacks that I found that I feel like everybody who travels moderately or often should have. The first one is if you're in North America, go and sign up for TSA PreCheck or Nexus. It makes a huge difference, especially in airports like LAX or in New York, where the lineups are always just huge. And it costs, I believe, like between 60 and $100, but it lasts many, many years. And by filling out the form and doing the interview and stuff, you can go ahead and skip the line and not have to take anything out of your bag and stuff when you're at the airport. And that just makes things so much faster if you're someone like me who is always late to the airport. If you have to do like connecting flights as well and don't know what the line is like and you might miss your connection, then having a Nexus Pass a lot of times can save you from that. And I believe the money it costs just for the cost of not having to rebook one flight is already worth it. The next hack that I have for you guys is having a good credit card. And in the past, I would just use credit cards that collected like no points and ones that like the bank told you to get. And it wasn't until I went ahead and finally signed up for an MX when my friend told me to that I realized that there was a lot of things that I was missing out on and that the cost of the Amex card itself was very worth it, both on points and benefits. This video is not sponsored or anything by Amex, but I signed up in May and I found that a lot of the benefits pay themselves off very quickly. With certain Amex cards, it actually covers the cost of your Nexus membership. And other things where it really does pay off is if you travel a ton, having access to all of the airport lounges with like free food and showers and everything, uh, the Delta Sky Lounge, even if you're in economy, those are things that I find make it the most worth it. Because visiting a lounge like one time, for example, already costs like 20 to $40 and also the annual memberships just really add up. And with the cost of the membership itself, it kind of just blankets all of that. If you travel a lot and use Uber, they also give you Uber credits each month as well as a premium membership, as well as certain hotels like the Fairmont or Marriott membership where they give you like a gift card or benefits when you check in just by using the card. Even though there's like a ton of other benefits with this card, I think just looking at the travel perspective of like hotels, the Uber, as well as the Nexus and the lounges, having a card like this is very handy for frequent travelers. I'm gonna drop a referral link down below, which gives you guys a bonus for signing up as well. But like I said, I'm not sponsored or anything by Amex. I just really love the card since getting it. So that is pretty much it for my travel bag for late 2019 and the things that I believe are good travel hacks for frequent flyers, as well as just things that are good to have to enhance your experience because flying is definitely not fun, especially when it is so frequent. Like I said, if you guys have anything else that you think I should add, make sure you drop a comment down below and I'll see you all in the next video.